Okay, the next map I'm going to have a look at and interpret is the start of injection map. Now, of course, that is a collection of maps. It's not one map. We know that. It's 10 maps. And if you've looked at some of these videos, you'll know that there's 10 maps numbered 0 to 9. And if we look at the choice map, which is this one, just double click there to bring it up, we know that 9 is used much of the time. Once the engine is warm at 90 degrees, 9 is used. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to click on 9 because it obviously it makes more sense for us to look at 9. Now also if you have looked at previous videos you will know that these numbers have been changed. Oh, I'll just open that up and double click on properties. They've been altered by using a factor 0 0.023437 and then I used an offset of minus 78 and the minus 78 was to allow me to view these figures as after top dead centre figures and because they occur before top dead centre they read as minus in other words 0 would be 0 top dead centre 1 would be 1 degree after top dead centre so minus 1 would be one degree before top dead centre. So I'm reading these really, I'm ignoring the minuses and I'm reading these as before top dead centre just because it makes life simpler for me in my head to think of them as numbers that don't have minuses in front of them. So I'm just going to look at these as if they were minus numbers without a minus. So I'm just going to look at them and say right well that's not minus 10.24 it's just 10.24 and that is 25.5. So I'm going to assume that these are just numbers with the stand statement before top dead center. Right now start of injection, what do we mean by that? Well we mean literally what it says, when does injection of fuel start? Because we do need to vary when injection of fuel is going to start. And there are two reasons why we need to vary it. If I want to inject more fuel it will take longer for the fuel to be injected obviously I can't magically inject let's say 10 milligrams in the same amount of time as I can 5. I mean that's just obvious and so because you can't do those two things in the same amount of time something must change mustn't it. Now that means that when I want to inject 5 milligrams of fuel if I start at 5 degrees of crankshaft before top dead centre, so I start at 5 degrees before top dead centre, let's assume it will take me 5 degrees to do the injecting. So I start at 5 and I will use 5 degrees. Those 5 degrees are my duration, they're the duration of fuel injection. So I start at 5, I take 5 degrees, so I finish at naught. So I finish at top dead centre and that's not a good, you know, not a bad place to stop because that's a good point at which you would like the fuel injected at top dead centre. Now let's say now I decide I want to inject 10 milligrams instead of my original 5 milligrams. Well if I inject it at the same place, so if I inject it at 5 degrees, if I assume that 10 milligrams will actually take 10 degrees to inject, then I will have 5 degrees to get to naught, and then 5 more degrees past naught. so I've used up my 10 degrees of injecting time. So I won't stop injecting until 5 degrees after top dead centre. Now that might not be the end of the world, but if the best time to get injection sorted is around about top dead centre, then I'm starting 5 degrees before and I'm finishing 5 degrees after. So maybe that's acceptable, maybe it's not, maybe I actually don't want that. Maybe I want to aim for always finishing closer to naught. In which case I can't start at 5, can I? So when I want to inject 5 milligrams, I'll start at 5 degrees. But if I want to inject 10 milligrams and it's going to take twice as long, I really need to start at 10 degrees before. Makes perfect sense really, doesn't it? Let's say I want to inject 15 milligrams. Well, perhaps I now need to start at 15 degrees before. All with the intent of ending more or less on naught. So I will start at a fixed point before top dead center, but because of the amount of fuel, I will allow enough time to, so that I can end roughly at naught. 
Now the designers will have taken that into account and they will have decided how near naught they need to hit. So they will have taken into account whether they should always aim for exactly naught or whether just before naught or just after naught or how much leeway they will allow. So that's up to them with their engine and their design. So you'll be able to check that by looking at the figures because you can look at start of injection maps and duration maps and then you can try to work out where you're starting, how much you're injecting where will you be ending so you can look at that sort of thing for yourself if you want now that's one complication if you want to inject more fuel you've got to start earlier so that's just one complication now there is a second complication with start of injection which is what I call old-fashioned timing it's not unusual on timing systems to want to advance the timing of spark in spark ignition or fuel injection on a diesel engine because when the engine starts to rev faster and faster and faster it's more efficient and you tend to get a little bit more power if you advance the spark or advance the point of injection so if you were injecting at let's say 15 degrees before top dead center that was your start of injection point as the revs rise you might want to move it to 15.2 and then 15.5 and then 16 or 16.5 you rarely move it more than one or two degrees we're not talking about huge amounts here so very very small figure changes like that generally tend to be advanced due to what I call timing advance in other words the revs are rising and you are moving the injection for that reason the injection point you're not moving it simply because there's more fuel which would look like it's advancing because obviously it would be occurring earlier because there's more fuel this is a tiny little bit extra on top of the more fuel so what we've got then in effect is we want the revs to rise so we inject more fuel to inject more fuel we need longer duration and so to have longer duration we need to have earlier start of injection so start of injection will seem to have advanced because it will occur earlier but on top of which because revs are rising we might want good old-fashioned timing advance so not only are we starting earlier but we might start a tiny fraction earlier again because of this old-fashioned timing advance now sometimes that is built into this start of injection map this extra little bit of timing advance and sometimes it's on separate maps and that depends on ECU structure and design for most of us as beginners it doesn't make any difference whatsoever because the only thing we'll be looking at is just these figures and we won't be worrying too much what is the reasoning behind those figures so so I've just explained some of the reasoning behind them just to give you a feel for what's going on you want to learn more then obviously you learn more and then you'll know more about it than I do right now let's have a look at what we've got there we've mostly got common sense in terms of what I've already explained because down here we are injecting close to top dead center so at idle and at very low revs and low injection rates so somewhere around about idle we can inject close to top dead center knowing that we will finish injection at close to top dead center but as the revs rise and the amount of fuel that I inject rise it's simply not possible I can't stay using these sorts of figures because if I did that I would never get injection to finish anywhere near top dead center or naught so what's happening is that I'm just going to work across here as a sort of a diagonal and we can see that we've gone from let's say 2.39, 4.85, 624, 7.99, 10.6, 14.3 so all the time as the amount of fuel I'm injecting is increasing which obviously is increasing the revs at the same time I'm moving start of injection 
I'm advancing it because it's got to be an advance because I need more time to get the fuel into the engine. So there we go, 14.13, roughly 18, 22, 24. I'm ending up somewhere around about 25, 25.5. It would be nice to think I could just carry on increasing that, wouldn't it? I mean, just think, well, I'll inject more. So I'll have more numbers up here on this scale. So I'll have 55 and then I'll have 60 and 70 and so on. I'll just keep injecting more and more and more and more. There is a limitation which is not obvious. And that limitation is the design of the injecting system. PD engines, and it's one of the reasons why in the future they were given up. PD engines can only inject while they are on the cam. So if they are only on the cam for, let's say, 35 or 40 degrees, then you will never be able to inject fuel outside that range because that's the only time that they are on the cam and building up pressure to do their injection. They might open and shut by electrical control via the ECU, which is what this map is, but opening and shutting isn't any good if the fuel isn't there under pressure ready to be squirted in. So there is a very, very fixed limit for injecting on PD engines because you can't inject before the pressure builds up and you can't inject after. So there is a limit that you wouldn't get if you were looking at a common rail engine because a common rail engine can maintain pressure as much as it likes. That means that these figures cannot be played with in terms of extreme factors. You can't just go and alter these figures to anything you like because you may well try to move them outside a range that the engine can cope with. Uh, the odds are you never will because people who make changes with these rarely move them more than a few degrees so mostly they're okay and generally speaking you wouldn't make any changes at all ever to an SOI map start of injection map without checking with other people to see what sort of changes they've found acceptable in the past because whatever you do do not assume that you can change these numbers and it will be okay because it will not be okay because start of injection numbers need changing and they need changing along with duration values so you would change both together and you would calculate both of them together to make sure they match so that's not something for a beginner to do or a beginner can do that but they will need some sort of guidance to work out what's a sensible change and what isn't so once again don't go down that road unless you're fairly sure you know what you're doing or you're prepared to gamble and that depends on how much of your money you want to spend on your car when you break it right I'm gonna stop there then I'll just click that one.